the 21st of March 2004. The Den, South Bermondsey. 16 years ago to the day. I am talking, of course, about Millwall 4, West Ham 1. They called it the Mother's Day Massacre. Lions TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of the sponsors that you can see on the screen around me. If you are going to do a bit of business in 2020, then please keep it in the Millwall family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below. Happy Sunday, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever you're watching this and wherever you may be watching this. We are in lockdown pretty much without anyone actually saying it. And to pass the time, we are trying all different sorts of content on Lions TV because this worldwide pandemic, pandemic, will not stop me pumping out content. So, in light of yesterday being the official 16-year birthday since we beat West Ham 4-1 at the Den in the Championship, I thought we'd do a little, um, little watch-along with it and I'll pass comment on it as I watch it. Share my memories of the day. I'm sure it will jog some memories of yours from the day. The club did a brilliant thing yesterday. They stuck out the game in full on their official YouTube channel. So fair play to them for that. And that is available to watch on the official Millwall YouTube account if you want to watch the game in full. I haven't done it yet. I thought it would be fun to watch this back and go off some of my memories of some of the players and some of the events because I'm sure it would be wrong. And you'll be able to correct me in the comments. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time and fire straight into it. And look at the start on 11 that Dennis Wise picked to start the match. It was Andy Marshall in goal. Kevin Muscat right back. Matt Lawrence and Darren Ward were the centre-halves. With Robbie Ryan at left back. And midfield was Paul Eiffel, Tim Cahill, Andy Roberts and Dave Livermore. I think Livermore might have played on the left that day. I'm not sure. I know Eiffel definitely would have played on a wing. Cahill, Roberts and Livermore, all central players. But I'm going to guess with Livermore played slightly left and up front was Neil Harris and Danny Diccio with Tony Warner, who was coming back from injury, playing manager Dennis Wise, Nick Chadwick, who I'm sure was on loan from Everton, a ginger geezer, Marvin Elliott and the swing dog, Peter Sweeney. And the first thing I'm going to say is this, 2004 was in the championship, it was an established championship side by then obviously, coming up in 2001 and winning the league, almost going back to back and making it into the Premier League the following season, losing in the playoffs to Birmingham. At the time I was wondering, how are we doing so well? Looking back now on paper at that team, uh, one name here, obviously, quite quite evident missing is Stephen Reid, who had moved on by then, I think, to... Did he go West Brom or did he go Blackburn? Can't remember. But Stephen Reid had moved on to Pastures New by then. But that aside, that is one hell of a side. And, and looking at it now, as I say, at the time I was thinking, why, why you know, we're doing so well here. How are we doing so well? And now I'm thinking, why did that team not play in the Premier League? Because <laughs> that is hell of a side. That is a hell of a side. It makes me smile, that side. It really does. Paul Ifill is in the top three... Top five, maybe top three, Millwall favourite players of mine of all time. Uh, another great player we had at the club, and he's not forgotten about, it's because Neil Harris was such a good striker. Steve Claridge was such a good striker in my lifetime. Paul Moody, brilliant striker in my lifetime. Teddy Sheridan, Tony Cascarino, to name but a few. And another one that sticks out to a lot of people is Richard Sudlier. And he'd be great in a side about now. But one that I think sometimes gets overlooked was Big Dan, Danny Diccio. He was superb for us, Danny Diccio. Absolutely loved him. And what a player he was. What a target man. And something we could do with now. We used to sling in these balls into the box with Paul Ifield, as I said, Reed before he left, Kine, and Big Dan just to fire in, get his head on them. I'm sure Danny Diccio ended up bald and is now living in Canada, uh, I think. But when he came through the ranks, I think he came through at Queen's Park Rangers as a young up-and-coming sort of 17-year-old. And... Um, he had long hair then, but again, but this, I'm veering off the point a bit. Big Danny Dicho, what a player. That's enough for me. Let's fire straight into the game. I will stop it at points, and uh, let's get into the action. So I definitely remember it being 4-1 on the day. I remember us getting two penalties. We missed two of those penalties. Poor Eiffel just fired one in there. Look at that. This is why I love this guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, absolute chop, blatant pen. Eiffel's face. Eiffel's face. Absolute blatant pin, and the players come in to congratulate him. He takes it away from Matthew Everett in there. Jesus Christ. If ever there was a penalty, that was going to be it. Uh, I'm going to stop it there quickly. I just want to make a quick comment. First thing that springs to mind is, um, I'm sure West Ham had the bottom tier that day. In fact, I know they had the bottom tier that day because it was one of the uh, few times at a football match I've seen the right police on horses come into effect. They did in the second half. West Ham were trying to get on the pitch. Bill were trying to get at West Ham. And um, the right police were on mounted horseback, sort of bouncing around the six-yard box at one point when the ball was up the other end. 
and it, it, it was pandemonium. But um, you can't see it there, but the West Ham fans, I'm sure, did have the bottom tier. As I said, in fact, I know they did. Um, the kits, I'm just going to pass a comment on the kits. Why are they so baggy back in the day? With the way football is now, the way with diets and, and things like that, and, you know, and trying to get every edge you can with speed and fitness and preparation, why were kits so baggy? Why did no one suss it out earlier that the kits were about nine sizes too big for everyone? Anyway, first penalty. I know we missed it because we scored four goals on the day and that one of them was a penalty. Memory serves me. Our penalty taker was Neil Harris. I think you're going to see Neil Harris just about to miss a penalty. I think it's, it's Bywater's legs and goes over. I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. Bywater saves it with his feet. Terrible penalty from, the, from uh, I was going to say, the gaffer. He's not a gaffer anymore. Terrible penalty for Neil Harris. They're happy for now, but they don't know what's fucking coming. Another long diag there from Muscat. Ships it long. Big Dan goes up for one. Doesn't win it. Drops the wise in the midfield. Kale, I feel. I'll tell you, we have some serious players. Serious players. I feel, again, great ball in from I feel. Comes across. There you go. And Christian Daly sticks it in his own net. Again, I feel there. Brilliant. Could plant either wing. So exciting. As a younger player, a little bit frustrating at times, and but eventually he got he, he come into his own. And his final ball in the end was superb. In today's terms, I think someone would want to buy him. I thought he was better than Jeb Wallace. Honestly, I, he was so good. I thought I loved him. I thought he was brilliant. Scored one of the greatest hat tricks I've ever seen at Cambridge again, which I might cover in another video. But Christian Daly couldn't do that again if he tried. Great finish. So one nil at half time. We come out the second half, and here we come again. Harris. Uh, sorry, that's not Harris. That is Nick Chadwick. There you go. The aforementioned Nick Chadwick has come on there. I know Harris plays, carries on, so I'm assuming he comes on for big Danny DJ. I'm not sure. Did we go three up front in the end? Can't remember. Another ball into the box. There's Tim Kales first. Sneaks in at the back post, which would become a trademark of his throughout his career. Not that celebration, of course. I'm talking about the headers. Uh, the celebration of the shirt over his head. I suppose he had to bomb that off in later years because he used to get booked for shit like that, but... There you go. Straight at Bywater. Bywater probably should have come for the cross, but he doesn't. I'll stop it there. It's 2-0. Later in his career, Kale obviously runs to the corner flag, give it the boom, 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 didn't he? But that obviously hadn't uh, materialised in those early days for Kale. And we're 2-0 up. And then, let me tell you, I've got it on silent, obviously. It was absolutely fucking rocking. What a day. I remember the day like it was yesterday. As I said, back then, it was, it was strange, really. Well, it wasn't strange because we didn't know any different. There was no social media. There was no Twitter, thank fuck. There was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. So, you know, I'd go, we'd go to the games. I'd go in the gate where I do the interviews now. Go in, the, go in, watch the game. I'd leave. I was 24 years old at the time. I had a brilliant social life. Uh, I wasn't a sad bastard like I am now, sitting in doing videos. And uh, yes, as I said, it, it was carnage. It was pandemonium. 2-0. And uh, the players there celebrating... Darren Wald, the Peckham Beckham, great mullet. That's Kale's first of obviously two that day, and he's lesser of his two goals. Good ball in from Chadwick. I'm not sure why we signed Chadwick, how many games he played or why he was on the pitch. I'm pretty sure he scores the last goal, though. Could be wrong. A rare attack now from West Ham. Of course, Andy Marshall's in goal. Stop that again quickly. Andy Marshall's in goal because uh, Tony Ward was injured, wasn't he? That's why he missed the cup final later that year. Injured by John Sutton, Chris Sutton's brother, in training. And uh, yeah, Denzel obviously missed this game. He was just coming back from injury. When I did my Lions Lounge with him, he told me that when Kale scored that that uh, third goal, that he, he went flying down a touchline and they sort of jumped into each other's arms. He said Kale hit him so hard that he, he thought he tweaked his injury again. Ball into the box, over Matt Lawrence's head. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible for Matt Lawrence. Matt Lawrence was a great defender. Shaggy was brilliant, but come to me was a right back. Ended up playing a lot of time at centre half as well. I think he got player of the year at centre back. Forged a good partnership with Darren Ward. Um, but I don't know whether the Sun's got his eyes. He's completely misjudged the flight. Marlon Hayward steps up. He does send Eddie Marshall the wrong way, I'm sure. There you go. Even though I've only been going a year. Yeah, he sends him the wrong way. Marlon Hayward. They think they're back in the game, but as we know, they're wrong. 2-1. So five goals. Other than one, all in the second half. Lawrence used to love that long diag. He would be good at the Neil Harris side. Kale wins a corner. He has a little bit of argy-bargy here with um, Repka. <laughs> Kale threw the elbow in there and Rip Repka's gone for the earlobe. Oh, Kale counters and goes for the opposite earlobe. Kiss on the lips. What is going on here? But yeah, he's, he's got him Repka's head here. And um, from the resulting corner, Paul Ifield again. Tim Kale pulls off his man. Who was that supposed to be marking him? The West Ham number seven. I don't know who it was. This one is up there with a... Paul Robinson against Huddersfield goal. I'm thinking of iconic goals at the Den. Ben Thatcher against Cholton many, many years ago. Um, I'm sure there's others. 
But again, for me, this one is an iconic goal at the den. This one is up there. This one is up there. And there you go. He sticks it in. Again, Paul Whitefield won the penalty that was missed. Set up the first. And now he sets up the third. Floats it in. The number seven. Oh, he's had to pay to get back in. He's gone so far the wrong way. The number seven. Neil Harris kicks the ball into the cold blow upper. The shirt is off from Kale this time. We don't see the collision with Tony Warner, as I mentioned. But 3-1 to the Lions. An iconic goal. With his left foot, what a player, Tim Cale. I'm sure before we score our last, do we get the penalty? I feel again, involved, unbelievable. Wins it back. Oh my God, what a ball. Neil Harris, oh, this is where Harris gets clipped and gets the penalty, yeah. And the ball goes over the bar. Um, Stephen Bywater does get sent off, I'm sure. Oh, he's, what's his name? Jeff, oh, what's his name? What's the fucking ref's name? Jeff Winter, wasn't it? Yeah, Jeff Winter. Is it Jeff Winter? Stroke red for Stephen Byrall of the shit house, of course, who would go on to play for me a wall in our relegation season. And a subkeeper comes on, and Tim Cale takes this penalty. And I'll be honest, I can't remember whether he saves it or whether he, whether he misses it. I've, does he sky it over the bar, Cale? Obviously, Neil Harris had the first penalty, missed it, terrible penalty, straight down the middle. Cale comes in for the second. I think he ballooned the dudes over the bar for the hat trick. Yeah, that fuck is wide. It was wide. High and not very handsome, unlike Tim Cale, the beautiful man. There he is, the middle legend. Um, so it's 4-1. So it's 3-1. And this is the fourth. I think Chadwick lobs, lobs the keeper on the fourth. Does he? Little clip there. This is it. Terrible defending. No, left foot. Boom. Yeah, that's right. Left foot, rocket. Nick Chadwick. Don't remember a lot about him. But he's letting the crowd know what he's all about there. And he scored for Millwall against West Ham in the Mother's Day Massacre. The biggest, one of the biggest defeats I've ever seen for it in a London derby at the Den. Repka's had an absolute Reggie blinker. And um, Chadwick pumps it high into the box. Kale there again. Uh, Darren Ward. What a side. Andy Roberts in, in his second spell at the club. Good central midfielder. Been trying to get you for Lions Lands, Robbo. Any chance if you're watching. But yeah, Nick Chadwick. Sort of a forgotten man at the club. But no one will ever forget that goal. And now remember this. The old legs were ringing around at the end of the game. And there was the final whistle. Oh, and it felt beautiful to relive it all over again. Tim Cale there looking as casual as anything. Made up a wrecker after the earlier ear-flicking incident. So there you go. What a game that was. What a team we had. Unbelievable. Some iconic middle players. Loads of, loads of iconic middle players in that team. That really has cheered my Sunday up. And I hope it's cheered your Sunday up as well. If you was there, you'll know how good it was. If you wasn't there, why wasn't you there? Uh, and if you wasn't born, then I hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into some unbelievable times we had at the club. That is up there for me. The team of the early noughties as well as the team from the late 80s. And I've got to be honest, the team from the, uh, you know, that got us up recently, that will go down in history as iconic in years to come, I'm sure. But to look back that, on, on that, and it's, it's quite nostalgic. It's quite, um, it's quite emotional. And uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of these videos, please don't be shy. I put it in the comments below what game you'd like to see me cover. Because let's be honest, we've got weeks, as I said... We're all, we're all barricaded in. We're all locked in at the minute under quarantine. But as long as I've got cameras, a smile on my face and the, and the ability to edit with a, with a laptop, I'm a content creator. This is what I do. I'll keep banging these videos out and hopefully I can get you through these tough times. Not completely by myself, obviously. I'm not the Don. But hopefully I can contribute to uh, getting you through these long and boring days as much as I can. I love doing videos. I hope you enjoy watching them. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.